once in a while, I'll call my brother and leave a voicemail and just be like, Rocky loves Emily. Rocky right, yeah, loves yep, yep. <laughs> Rocky loves Emily. Emily. Rocky <laughs> loves Emily. Yo, that's yo, I'm so glad you yeah. remembered that, man. Father, my father, he he suggested that I move to Baltimore with my uncle because I was so I was so heavy in the streets. I was getting in trouble. I was getting locked up. Uh, like not no like bad. I was just like selling weed, you know, getting locked up for it. And you know, so I was just like ma not making a, a great name for myself. Speaking of basketball, me and you ran something up the other day on some dudes. No big deal. Cut them up pretty good. No big deal. <laughs> You and your boy, handle three bands, handle three bands off of Matt and Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Got him on three quick ones. No big deal. Yeah, yeah, definitely no big deal. The robbery started around then, you know. So my dad, was, oh hell nah. Y'all getting shot at? You feel? Y'all got people coming to the crib, shooting up the. You know what I'm saying? Like so, go jump. Go with your uncle, you need to go to Baltimore, you need to move, you know? All right, hello and welcome to the Working Perspectives Podcast. I'm your boy, old uncle Maddie, Matt Lavelle. Uh, today on the show, we have the one and only Joshua Holmes. Uh, Josh is an artist. Uh, and as a, in these, well, we'll get into his story. I don't want to give too much away. Um, but he's, uh, he's an artist that can be found on Instagram. It's, uh, hybrid homes underscore 88. We'll have a link in the description of this episode. We bring it up a couple times on the show, hybrid homes underscore 88. Uh, so on this show, Josh and I, we're going to reminisce about some great movies in the nineties to start off the show. Then we're going to talk to Josh, talk about how, I mean, He's sin, you know, it's crazy to think like you're going to see so, me and him have so many similarities of like, it's funny that we've met this point in our lives because where we've grown up and where we've lived, we've literally probably crossed paths hundreds of times without even knowing we've been that close in proximity to each other that I mean, and it's crazy to think that I've had him on the show now and his story. It's a it's a phenomenal story. It's a comeback story, you know. He really lays it all out there. He's he's open and honest, and I really, really can't thank him enough for being on the show. He does such a great job. Uh, it's a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. So without any further ado, I'm Matt Lavelle. My guest today is one and only Joshua Holmes. This is the Working Perspectives Podcast. Enjoy. <laughs> All right, hello and welcome to the Working Perspectives Podcast. I'm Matt Lavelle. I'm coming today by the one and only Joshua Holmes. On this show, we're going to be talking about Josh's life, him growing up, and his different experiences that led him to the man he is today. I met Josh at the gym. Uh, super good dude, honestly. It's one of those guys where you, you run into him and you think to yourself, man, this guy's got a jib, and I like the cut of that jib. So super excited. He agreed to be on the show. Really excited to get his story and his message out there. So without any further ado, Josh, thanks for being on. Before we get started, I would just like to ask, do you remember your favorite movie at the age of 10? Absolutely. Mighty Ducks D3. Dude, dude, speak, people sleep on three. Three's Come a on, man. Dude, Come three's on, a time. Let's see. Dude, <laughs> dude, three, I mean. That's a no-brainer. <laughs> dude, three, they get a little older, right? So they're yes. like in their teen years. And then, dude, the funnier. It was definitely funnier, right? Right. You saw, like, and you Goldberg's got some, you got, personality, Averman coming out. Right. Yeah. And you got uh, you got a uh, new addition, you know, to the characters. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? They introduced new people to the movie. Come oh, on, yeah. man. You know, oh, dude, like, they introduced a whole new whole new A whole new cast, man. The whole team yeah. was changed, man. Oh, yeah. You know, so that's dude, what that turned it up. And then they kept the star, of course, you know, yeah. Conway. You know? Oh, dude. Dude, the crazy thing was, the first movie, Kanye was Conway was le legit. I said Kanye. Conway was legit the worst player on the team in the first movie, right? Right, second, right. Second team, second team, ultra mediocre. Second movie, right? Third movie, exactly. he's the captain and like best player. I was like, what the hell did this? Right, happen? right, you exactly. Know? Hey, listen, let me tell you, man. That movie really inspired me to like roller brick. 
uh, rollerblade bad. Oh. Like I had to get out there in the street and just like go, man. You know, say I didn't need four wheels either. I want, <laughs> I wanted the rollerblades <laughs> straight up. I wanted to go all in. <laughs> oh man, oh dude, people forget rollerblades were it back in the day, bro. Yo, you didn't absolutely. have a pair of blades, man. Oh my god, we were living on those things, bro. Yo, facts, man. I'm trying to tell you, oh. man. The uh, be- the best things out there, man. You know, when we were young, you know, outside of a bicycle, man. Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. Come on. Agreed. Come on. Agreed, man. Yeah, I, dude. I I feel like it was like. The early 2000s, rollerblades really got a bad rap and really, you know, were turned into, <laughs> I don't want to use, I don't want to use the term, but uh, there was a specific term given to people that did rollerblades. But dude, yeah, no, I, I was, I, dude, also like street hockey. Did you play street hockey coming up? Yes, absolutely. Dude, absolutely. the best, right? Street Bro, I had the gloves, the I had the sticks. Oh, At one oh. time we improvised. We had, you know, you know, you got to improv sometimes. And we had the brooms. Uh, yeah. what else? Um, oh my goodness, we had the brooms. What we had, yo, we had so many appliances. Did you ever out do there, like just... the the chest? The we did the baseball chest protector for the goalie for street hockey. Uh, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We did that, dude. The go. I mean, and like they had a, you know, their one side was a baseball glove, the other side was a stick. But dude, street <laughs> hockey, man, we played that like, like we would have, like you know, me and my like my, you know, my gang growing up. It was like we would play football one day or wiffle ball or baseball or capture the flag or something like that. Or and then street hockey, we would like summer, like we just alternate what we did. Like some days we did like we would go like we do boxing one week. You know what I mean? Like we just did a bunch of different stuff. Right. But right, dude, right. St- street hockey was on the on the card like a lot. You know what I Yo, mean? Yo, absolutely. It was uh it was definitely uh one of those go to activities that we always participated in, you know, just because uh. how you know how active you know you were just you know maneuvering on your blades while trying to you know score a goal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Especially with with, yeah. with with a broom. Oh man! <laughs> you know we we're we're literally yeah. playing with rubber hockey, uh, rubber <laughs> hockey pucks, and the actual first um hockey set I got on Christmas uh was uh, it came with a rubber ball and everything, man. I'm trying oh, to tell yeah. you we were involved. My brother, my brother and I, uh, my stepbrother and I, we were involved, man. Like seriously, Dude. I'm talking about. Want we wanted to jump over the cars just like they were in movies, man. <laughs> Yo. You know what I'm saying? Yo, when I'm they're trying going to down the you. hill, and he, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm Dude. trying to tell you, man. We we're Dude. taking we're taking on the biggest hills and and, and what rollerblading down them. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Well, yo, I'm trying to tell you, man. I had shoulder. Yo, look, man, shoulder, not the shoulder pads, but um, elbow pads, knee pads. Oh, yeah. I was involved. Helmet, man. You know? Oh yeah. Seriously, Big man. Time. Because dude, of that movie. Dude, I remember like being a kid and like being out front of my house in the street and replaying, like pretending to be like so in the in the second movie that went with Iceland, they have a shootout in the championship. And I remember like replaying like being the different characters in the shootout. You know what I mean? <laughs> being like Mendoza when he missed it, you know, and Banks and Fulton Reed and the knuckle puck and oh dude. It was the time, man. It was it be, the time. It be lit. That's that's how that's how much of an influence it was. It, it became oh. theatrical. <laughs> oh, dude, it was in people sleep on. I mean, it was incredible, absolutely incredible. Especially to like <laughs> the whole franchise was phenomenal, right? Like right. start absolutely. to finish. I didn't. I didn't watch the remake show that they did, but. I don't know. Be either. I'm Be either. I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't interested. You know. Yeah. I didn't yeah. want. I didn't want to go any further after that. You no. know. Once you know the dynasty was there. You know. Yeah. You could. You couldn't remake. You know a better version than. You oh. know, those three uh, movies, man. You know. It's rare Seriously. you get a trilogy that good. For sure. Yo, I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to tell you, man. Um, yeah. And I. I, yeah. I, I, I I, I'm just not, I, I'm not gonna front. I was gonna go with the three ninjas, but oh. I don't know if y'all ready for that. Though. No, another classic, man. Another classic. Absolutely love, dude. Three ninjas. I'm one of I'm one of three boys, right? So yeah. like, I have two brothers. You know what I mean? So it's like Rocky, Colton, Tum Tum. We were all over it. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yo, <laughs> dude. We, used, dude. Every once in a while, I'll call my brother and leave a voicemail and just be like, Rocky loves. Emily, Rocky right? Yeah, love. yep, yep. <laughs> Rocky love, love Emily. Emily, Rocky love, <laughs> Emily. Yo, that's yo. I'm so glad you yo, remembered that, man. Dude, come on, well, man. I, we should do a thing where, like, I, you know, a real test should be if I should have someone on the show, I'd be like, all right, just finish this song. 
right? And I'll be like, <clears throat> Rocky loves. And if they say the right <laughs> thing, then I'll be like, all right, you're in. You're good, you know? But if not, it's like, yo, it's You're qualified. Bricks, you are yeah. qualified as yeah. one of us. <laughs> yeah. If you can complete the lyrics to that song, you're in. No questions about it. Yeah, for sure, dude. That's great. right. And look dude. who and look who their trainer was. Like, come on, man. Oh my god. Like, come bro. on. Like, like seriously. Do do I do I need to say any more, man? Oh come on, man. This is grandpa, man. This is yeah. grandpa. Yeah. Dude, come the on, one man. the one you couldn't, scene you couldn't ask for a better a, a better a better movie, a better set, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And a hell of a dude. performance, you know, from oh. all three characters. Top top to finish. Seriously. Top yeah. Phenomenal, Seriously, absolutely. Man, I'm talking Nin- about 90s to the T for sure. <laughs> Yo, also they had the walkie-talkie gimmicks in the room, like oh my yeah. god, <laughs> and they lived in like a development. Yo, oh my god, man, tell like, me you didn't do a want- development. You couldn't tell me you didn't find any type of innovation in that. You know what I'm saying? Like that oh. didn't inspire you to innovate. You dude, know what I'm saying? The we, same we, thing, th- dude. The the cup with the strings on it, right? Like you did that gimmick. But yo, did you have, I know what was more of an influence, right? The walkie talkies in the rooms in Three Ninjas or the talk boy from Home Alone 2? What is more of an influence? What did you talk boy? The talk boy. The talk talk boy was. Bro, I bought it. Toys R Us. What? Bro, like this. Come on. Yeah. Just like this. Hey, yo, t- tell Big Sis she won't make it to school this morning. <laughs> you know, you know how, you know, you know how it records you, right? You can, t- <laughs> yeah. Yo, this is epic. Sure. This is epic. Yo, Bro. I can't believe you even brought that up. What? That I was mean, one of dude. the most famous toys. Oh, uh, the talk boy. Come on. Dude, I, dude, I legit. The, fin- t- the like, great finesse. Oh, dude. T- I'll tell you, talk about like genius marketing. Right, yes. like I don't, I I would love to see the number of kids that requested a talk boy that Christmas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we gotta bro, see the stats. Legit we need to see the statistics, off. dude. Like they they sold out. You know, it was a hit movie. Right, you know? right, right. Like, I would love to see. I tell you what, that's they, they genius sure enough got some uh, money from my parents. You oh, know? bro, bro, I would have been like, literally. At, oh, dude, I begged, but I just you know didn't happen. <laughs> didn't happen. <laughs> I got the I got the Legos, you know. Yo, tell me, I can't, Matt, I can't be mad. I can't be mad. I got a no, game. No, you, you gear can't. You can't. You but it I was mean? one I of those things that really intrigued me personally to bring something to show and tell. I wanted to out oh. show and tell everybody. Remember show oh. and tell? Come oh, on, man. Dude. Come on, man. Bro, Come you on, had bro. to bring the best toy. Oh, yeah. You had to bring the best toy. You can't bring oh. the wackest toy to class. You know what I'm saying? No. Come dude, on, that, man. Like, like, Show and tell was like the inspiration for like balling outrageous. You know what I mean? Like that's where he first learned. Like you want to have, dude. You want to have the flyest gear. You want to have the coolest car. Like let's start with show and tell, babe. You want to show up with the best GI Joe, right? You know what I mean? Like you want to have the best remote control car or whatever. Like you need to have the gimmick. You know what I mean? Like it all started with show and tell. You know? Why, this is why we're all wearing Jordans. You know what I'm saying? Like that's where it started. That's so funny, yo. It's the truth. Good old show and tell. So that's why it's so ridiculous because you really, as a child, you were so passionate about it. Oh, bro. If you, if, I mean, uh, that's a good question to ask. If you could bring one thing to work, like a show and tell thing to work, what would it be? As as an adult? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trying to think. You know what I, you know what I would bring? Okay. So the question was, what would you bring to show and tell as an adult, like to an office? I wouldn't be allowed to bring this. We'll just say. Right? Wait, wait, wait. So we got to understand the content, though. What's the con- okay? What's the content so, level? So here's the deal, right? Um, the Philadelphia Eagles. You know them. You love them, right? Best football team in the world. Uh, yeah, there was some. a time. There was a time. <laughs> there was a, a linebacker on the Philadelphia Eagles named Jeremiah Trotter, right? Okay. Right? <laughs> Jeremiah Trotter, he was known as the Axeman, right? Okay, as remember, we all know. Remember, yeah, right, remember his celebration was the double axe handle smash, right? He okay. Was, and Trotter, dude, Trotter was the best. Trotter under Jim Johnson, unstoppable, right? Okay. <laughs> Be- best linebacker in the league. Trotter under Jim Johnson. Fans. Well, I mean, like, you know, he's maybe not the best in the league, but, dude, Trotter under Jim Johnson was a hell of a linebacker. No, no, hell of a right? performer. Both of them. Right. Yeah. Both of them. Yeah. Without a so, doubt. Right. So he's the axe man. Um, so I have a hatchet signed oh, by Jeremiah geez. Trotter that uh yeah, that's probably, uh, Oh yeah, look, signed the axe man, Jeremiah Trotter. 
Uh, Hatchet oh. signed by Jeremiah Trotter is probably what I would bring to show and tell as an adult today. Oh, not a bad. Wow, yeah. that is amazing. Not, not mad. Whoa, not mad iconic, it. yo. Yeah. Damn, you yeah. you just look. We might as well all just pack our stuff and get ready. Right. Sure. Get ready you to know, end this shift. It, uh, it's <laughs> illegal to bring. I work in an office, so I would be fired immediately. No, no, no. It's, <laughs> it, we're partaking in the activity of showing and right. telling. Exactly. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. They should. They didn't say no weapons allowed at show and tell. So that's right. on them. Right. Come on. I Technically, said what's the content level earlier. Yeah. Technically, <laughs> it's a tool. So clearly, you know. clearly, we was getting. We're getting, we're getting we're getting somewhere, ladies and gentlemen. We're bringing axes in. Uh, I'm gonna bring my go. I, look, I'm gonna bring my golden gun. There but I ain't go. talking about that an actual gun. I'm gonna talk about 007. That's what you know, you're gonna the, say. The, was it from the, 007? The golden yes, gun? 007, the original. Oh, you know, oh, well, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm bringing it. You know, like I'm bringing it to Love work because it. we're it's Friday. We all just got paid. Let's plug it into the TV. Let's get it Dude. in. I got all four <laughs> controllers. Let's go. Yeah, you know I mean, that Come is on, a man. great idea. I love. Come that. on, man. <laughs> that, <laughs> Come on, we're tuned in. It's showing and telling. We're bringing, we're bringing oh, it out, man. man. Let's get involved. Man, you know? would you? Have, what was your favorite video game growing up? Ah, ah. Sega. Oh, so Sonic, good. man. Sonic, Sonic. hitter, absolute Come hitter. On. I legit. I've I've told this story before on the show, but I'll tell you because you know you need to hear it. Um, right, but right. When, <laughs> co co coming up, right. We had my house, right? We had one TV with one video game system, right? Sega. And back in the day, people forget now because everything's wireless. Back in the day, the gimmicks had wires, the controllers. Controller had a wire on it, right? So, okay. and Sonic, we had it. I think Sonic, if I remember correctly, Sonic was a one player game, the original. Because, yeah, Sonic and Tails and Sonic and Knuckles didn't come until later, right? Right, right, right. Remember, because so, they had the double, they had the double yeah. cartridges. Remember? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, so it was a one player game, Sonic, right? So in our house was like you play, once you got a game over, it's the other person's turn, right? Right. So my older brother, uh, you know, he's a jerk, but right, like he would always <laughs> like I would get it, I would get a game over and he would just he would be talking the whole time while I'm playing, right? And then I'd get a game over and then it'd be his turn and then he would play forever. And I'd be like, all right, well, what's the point of even being here anymore? And I would leave, right? Right. So, right. Because he took forever and he sucked. And I was like, dude, you're the worst. So either way, um, one day, it was a Saturday morning. I was like, you know what? I'm going to wake up early, right? I'm going to get down. I'm going to get some games in before he wakes up so I have some time. You know what I mean? Right. I got some time time on the Sega, right? Well, I forgot. Like we all We all shared a room. So when I woke up, he woke up. You know, <laughs> fucking, right, 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 right. Oh, that like we, sucks we're all the you, same that resonates. Yeah, that yeah. resonates. <laughs> so I go downstairs and I start playing. Right. And I'm like doing whatever. He comes down and he's on the couch and he's talking and he's running his <laughs> mouth. And I'm just like, son and then like I get a game over. Right. And I'm like, son of a. <laughs> and I threw the controller at him. And when I threw the controller at him, it ripped the, the system, like the console off the, like the right. cabinet. Fell on the floor, broke, never worked again. Big trouble. Oh, no. yeah. To be fair, no, though, I don't think, yeah. It's I a mean, horrible distraction, man. It's his fault. It's his fault. It's his fault. 100% his fault, you know? I can't be held responsible for my actions. Yo, but way to have something so, memor you know, memorable, you feel me, to, to, to hold yeah. on to. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, seriously, because that, that was a moment you got to share. Unfortunately, you know, it, it caused in something so catastrophic. Right, right, right. You right, know, right. for the system. For the system. <laughs> oh, dude, I know. Like, I, I, I mean, I would love to see. Like, I bet there's like a video of them online of like people just freaking out during a video game, right? Like, dude, how many controllers oh. have you thrown across the room? You Bro, know what I mean? like, like, yo, oh. I couldn't. I know. Listen, I can, I, I can emphasize, man, because I didn't. It, it's been about three of them at least, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Seriously, yeah. man, it's been about three, man, and. And uh, for real, man, like, like I'm so shameful to even express that. You know what I'm saying? Because oh. when you look at it, you're like, damn, man. Like, that's how seriously, you know, uh, and, and passionate you were about <laughs> completing whatever phase of the game uh, you were in. You know what I'm saying? Bro. Dude, that's why women will never understand, right? Like, well, maybe some women will. But most women will never understand, like, it's, it's the, you know, it's four in the morning. You've been playing the same level on a game for the last five hours, it's over. right? 
You've lost every time, every time, and you, you can't finally, figure it out. You can't figure it out, right? You're going through life after life, and you finally <laughs> get and you beat the boss. Like that type of feeling, right? Yo. No, no one, nothing can compare to that. No, nothing, bro. It's that's why my friend and I compare Sonic to life because, as you can recall, or if you can recall, anytime you got to Doctor uh, Robot, you oh. know. Dr. It was, it was such yeah. a hassle to beat this guy. Man. Oh, he was right? the worst. He was it's the like, worst. So in life, right? It's the same thing. It's like you get you're 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 just trucking on, man. You're 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 yep. tr- you know, you got you got your trials and then you're triumphant. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And then next thing you know, you get you get hit with then another you get, trial. <laughs> you're yep. like, what? Then you Hold get your Dr. Robot. On. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so and when you finally get to the ultimate board. You end up seeing Doctor Robot. You're like, all right, I got uh, this, man. Bro. And then you, and as you can recall, anytime, oh my goodness, this is the worst feeling ever. Anytime you lose three times against uh, Doctor Robot, what do they do? They start you right over, uh, all the way over. Dude, that, yo, <laughs> that's another beginning. thing, dude. I would love to see like kids nowadays if they like, because now there's like a save, like they can save it. You know what I mean? Like, they right, can save right, the right. Game. They don't know that. They don't know. They don't know the pain. Oh, uh, and like, like the intensity <laughs> of when you're on your last life, right? And if you lose, you have to start the game over. They don't know oh. that pain. They don't Bro. know that pain. Matt, wow. Matt, listen. Only the real ones can resonate with us right now, man. I'm trying oh, to tell bro. you, bro. bro. <laughs> because that right, Yo. that's like playing in Metal Gear Solid when it first came out on oh. PS2. Bro, and I'm sitting here. It's three something in the morning. We, yeah. Look, remember the slumber parties? You invite no. all your friends over. You know what I'm Dude, saying? But so but we like all, event- we're all trying to tackle one but, the same task. Yeah, <laughs> but eventually it becomes a team effort where there's like, if you had a good run, your buddy's like, "Dude, take my turn." You're almost there. We just need to be like. Eventually, becomes like a harmonizing team effort. Like, dude, we're all we're all trying to win here. Yeah, for everybody, you know. <laughs> you had one guy that was like the better guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, the sleeper. Yeah, for sure. But Bro, no, man, it's, yeah. I'm trying to tell you, man. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. But if yeah, you don't man. know who Rocky loves, then you don't know that pain, baby. Yo, you know fa- I mean? fa- facts, facts, bro. <laughs> like you definitely don't know that. You can't even experience real life if you don't know who Rocky Rocky no, loves or, no, or, or, or how Rocky. passionate Rocky was about this one. You no. know what I'm saying? Straight up, man. Yeah, Damn, man. Incredible story, man. Incredible oh, story for real, man. For sure. So okay, so you're the man, dude. So I would like to, so like I said on the show today, I have the one and only Joshua Holmes. Uh Joshua Holmes is the owner proprietor of hybrid homes underscore eight eight on Instagram. And he's got some amazing artwork there that he uh creates, produces. We'll have a link to this uh to the Instagram in the description of this episode. I highly suggest everyone checking it out. Honestly, it's kind of a lot of what we're talking about, but in through Josh's eye, right? Like I'm looking like you got a gimmick with the Ninja Turtles. You got a gimmick with Lisa Simpson and Rita's. You got a gimmick right. with Batman. You got a gimmick with like, you know, uh, Donald Duck, Mario Brothers. Like you have a bunch <coughs> of really, really cool stuff. Dude, you even have like an MLKJ kind of thing. Going. Like you have a ton of amazing, incredible art here that you do on all different types of canvases. And it's really, really just like, Interesting, thought-provoking, but beautiful stuff, man. You really have a gift. So like I said, everyone, in the description of this episode, we'll have a link to uh, hybrid homes underscore eight eight uh, for to check out Josh's artwork, and you can contact him if you're interested in purchasing any of it. Really, really cool stuff. But I want to keep it moving. I want to get to know our guest that is today, the one and only Josh Holmes. So, Josh. Yeah, I appreciate uh, you. Stuff. I appreciate you. Hey, of course, man. Of course, bro. That's Seriously, I appreciate you. Seriously. Of course, man. Hey, we're here. Hey, everyone, we're here to help each other. Otherwise, why the hell are we here? You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, okay. So, like I said, me and Josh met at the gym right away, hit it off, like the color of his jib. You know what I'm saying? Cut of his jib. So, Josh, I want to get to know you a little better. So, uh, where did you grow up? And where were you born and where did you grow up? All right. So, I was born, I originated in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Okay. And okay. I grew up in, all right. So, like I tell everyone, I grew up like a military child because I grew up in uh, Pittsburgh, the city of Pittsburgh first, uh, from like, you know, three to five. Then, from like, or matter of fact, from four to seven, we grew up in Mount Airy, Philadelphia. And okay. from, 
yeah, yeah. From there on, uh, I grew up in California for like seven years, and then I came back and uh, grew up. Uh, where, well, where, where were you at in California? So I was out in uh, Rialto, California. Uh, so I was born in Thousand Oaks and lived in Simi Valley till I was seven. Mm, mm, so, mm. wow. Yeah, God bless the child. Wild, right? <laughs> wild, right? This is wild. Damn. Seriously, man. That's uh, a hell of an experience out there, man. You know? Yeah. Seriously. And you ha- said you lived out there till you were what, like? Uh, to about teenagers? like twelve or eleven. Okay, twelve yeah, or eleven. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, How did you yeah. like it out there? Uh, I love, I loved it. I loved it. Um, actually, so growing up, um, in Philadelphia, um, I was like, um, under the influence of poverty. Uh, staying with my mother. Uh, so okay. my father, uh, I, I moved out to California with my father. Uh, at a young age, and he introduced me to like the suburban lifestyle. So it was an, it was an yeah. amazing experience. You know, I got, I got introduced to the church from there. Mm-hmm. Um. I um actually my grades actually went up when I uh, moved out uh, moved out to California because of you know the, uh, how big of a impact not only the uh, environment was on my life but how you know how big of a difference you know it was for me mentally as a child you know uh you know by changing the scenery you know what I'm saying caused the child to change his you know way of thinking Dude, you know what I'm saying when, yeah when you go from I mean like. You were in Pittsburgh before, right? So you yeah. go from like PA, like a northeastern city where it's cold, bro. Like Pennsylvania, people don't realize Pennsylvania is a rough state. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like there's some hard sons of sons of guns around here, right? Like they take like the the attitude is is more like like if it, I from from my experience at least, like if you go other places, people are generally like nice. Right. Right. But here it's like I'm uncomfortable if someone's nice to me for no reason. You know what I mean? Right. And I think that that's a PA thing. You know, right. like I think that's right. a Pennsylvania right. thing. Right. But you gotta change that dynamic. I mean, well, so when you were here in PA, you said you were with your mom, right? Right. Right. And then you went to California and you were with your dad, right? Yes. So did you think being around having like a male role model and a male like influence did that change the dynamic as Big well? Big difference. You think? Big difference, big difference, yeah. because it it was a uh, it was one of those things where um, it was rather you know how students prefer a hands on learning experience, right? That's what it was for me living w- living with my father, opposed yeah. to living with my mother, who's trying to just keep a roof over our head while taking care of four children on her own. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it was a is a, a big big difference. You know what I'm saying? And um, plus, we seen we like, we seen the re, we seen the results of you know it you know uh being that much of a difference. Well, I, I mean, I dude, I couldn't agree with you more. Like my dad left when I was 15, right? And I tell right. you this all the time: when he left, the law left with him. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, right. you know, if he wasn't there to infu- enforce the law, the law wasn't being enforced. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, right. Right. I feel like it's different. Like, you know, and when you're younger, it's different with the mom. Cause like when you're younger, you're still a small kid. But like, by the time you get to a certain age, if you're a boy, like boys is different, bro. You got to smack them around a little bit. You got to out them. Cause they Absolutely. need, that's how they learn. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. Like, I agree. You can't, you can't let them, like, I was telling my wife, I was like, you know, we have a, like, I have a, a daughter, right? And it's like, I, I always say, like, I, I feel like I can love her more because it's a girl, right? And I can hug yeah. her and, like, be more affectionate with her. Where if it's a boy, that shit stops right away, and I got to start beating them early. You know what I'm saying? Just because, right. like, boys are stupid. You know, like, it's just it's part <laughs> of the gimmick. And I'm not saying I got to hurt them. But I'm saying, like, that's just how it is. You know, like, I cannot be nice to him. Like, he right. needs to know, like, this is this is the deal. Like, I'm, you no, know. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a different, it's, it's a different, and it has to be. Because why? It's a different construct when it comes to, you know, these two different species we're talking about. A right. male and a female, you know what I'm saying? Yes. You, you know, both can't be raised, you know, under the same conditions, you know. It's yeah. regarding, as far as, you know, building these type of characteristics for this male figure, or this female figure, you know what I'm saying? That's going to yeah. eventually become a grown woman one day, just like the male will be, you know, a grown man one day. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah I to- I totally get I I totally uh, get it. It's um you know it's something that we all you know I I I believe you feel me like yo it's something that we all should pay attention to. You know what I'm saying? That much more. You know what I'm saying? Seriously, yeah. you get what I'm saying? Yeah. For real, because I, like dude, you know we're could not agree more. Like seriously, you know like it, it's it's so it's so vital to do so because we need it. You know, like we need it. Yeah. It's it's a sense of direction from each parent. You know what I'm saying? 
yes. that you know that you get from both and you need that growing up in a a, a, a society like this you know what i'm saying straight up yes man, you know man, I, dude could not agree more and like Dude, I think people flourish in different ways, right? Like, say if you're a girl, right? Like, if for, I told my wife, I was like, look, if when it comes to discipline, that's my job, right? Like, right. I enforce the discipline, and you need to be there to to coddle her and comfort her. That's your job. That's the right. way it works, right? If we can't both be the bad cop, we can't both be the good cop. You know what I mean? Like, right. one of us right. has right. to... One of us has to be the stick. One of us has to be the carrot. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, exactly. So, like, you, you, so w- when it works in that dynamic, I see, like, there's true growth because there has to be consequences for your actions, right? right. You know right. what I mean? And it's tough. I, I mean, my mom, you know, she had four kids by herself, and it was tough, right? Like, looking back, you know, so right now I have a kid, it's tough, bro. And when you're by yourself, it's tough. You know, yeah, and it's tough yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's tough to be both, you know, but right. I see Woo. where when you're so when you're saying you moved to California and you're living with your dad, you saw like growth and you saw like you were flourishing there. Is that right? Yeah, abso- do you think, absolutely. Do you absolutely. think do you think the added discipline had had something to do with that? A- absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And you can um, <clears throat> and you can tell because that's exactly where most a lot of my inspiration came from is when I uh, moved out to California, you know, uh, just like I said, being at the, once the environment changed, you know, of course, what happens, you know, and, and especially if the environment is a positive outlet for the individual, yeah. you know, say he's yeah. going to what, like you just mentioned uh, prior, uh, he's going to flourish, you know what I'm saying, and do nothing yeah. but flourish, because why yeah. there's a different construct, it's more restrictive, it's more, it has, it has a limit to it, you know, but it has a limit to a reason why, because its limit is built there because the barrier needs not for you to what you know i mean try to jump over it but break through it because why it's teaching you you feel me a level of you know achievement of success yeah. of yeah. growth you feel me that comes with all these territories of you know being a responsible gentleman or responsible yeah. male figure or female figure you know what i'm saying good dude could not agree more so you're in California and you stayed there till uh, you're 12 years old, you said? Yeah, yeah, about 12 years old. Okay. And then did you come back to PA? Yes, I came back to PA and I moved back to Harrisburg for okay. a year, for half a year. And then you I, with there? I was staying with my aunt and okay. she took me in while my mother was trying to get everything together financially with me moving back. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I stayed with her in the city of Harrisburg. Was uh, moving back your choice or it was it was my choice. It was my choice because I, I missed um you know, I yearned you just homesick? Uh, to see my mother and my uh yeah. my brothers and sisters, you know, and uh oh, so it, it was it got... just you that went to live with your dad. Yes, 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 yes. Did he yes, have another so, family out there? Uh so he um ended up getting married, you know, to a, a woman out there. And um, you know, that was my new family, of course. Um Did you but, get um, along with them or yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hell yeah, yeah man. It was yeah. <laughs> totally different. It was, it was yeah. different, man. It was yeah. But um, you know, all in all, but they were uh, nice, right? Like they yes, were nice it was, and welcoming and like And they were from and, St. Louis. So they know? were Midwest wanted to be good. Yo, yeah. So they yeah. were just like just yo, you part of the family grown, now. Yeah. Yeah. Cook everything, you know, uh, like the, the Christmases change. The ver- yeah. yo, I ain't really have a real birthday until I moved out to California. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Did so like, I got to feel like brothers or anything like, there. What'd you say? Did you have like step siblings there with your? Yes, I did have. Family? I had yeah. a step. Um, I had two step siblings, uh, a brother and a sister. You still close with them? Or absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Nice. So to this, that's cool. Yes, 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 See, yes. That 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 like blended extended family. That's some good stuff, man. That's awesome. Right. So, it, it, it so, is, man. so you really did well then with your dad out in California, but you ended up getting homesick and you're like, Hey, I want to come back to PA. I want to like see my mom and my brothers and sisters again. So you come back, you, your mom's getting ready for you to come back. So you're living with your aunt for a year. Right. And then do you right. say aunt, do you say aunt or aunt? My auntie, my auntie. Uh, I knew it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we just, we talked about that on a previous show. It's a, it's a black, white thing. Black people say aunt, white people say aunt. It's a thing. What are you gonna do? It's, you know, uh, it, it varies. It, uh, yeah, yeah. I guess depending on how how thorough or how cool, quote unquote, yeah. cool the aunt yeah. may be or the auntie. True, true, true. <laughs> you know? So yeah, 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 for sure. Um, and then 
Uh, so, okay. So then you're back here and then you're kind of, you're getting into your teenage years. Are you doing any sports or anything at this time? Yeah, I, absolutely. <laughs> Funny thing is I was involved in a hell of a lot of sports, <laughs> okay. but I was like, I was one of those, uh, sports players that, um, I didn't have enough motivation to understand, um, that sports came with leadership, mm. you know what I'm saying? And I had, uh, uh, I was willing to not be a leader, <laughs> yeah. but be more so a, a follower, you know, saying during my yeah. middle school and um, my high school years. But I stayed, but I, I always stayed involved in sports, but I never really could shine, you know, or outshine, you know. Um, Were you more team sports or individual sports? Uh, team. So baseball, football, basketball, you know. Okay. Spe speaking of basketball, me and you ran something up the other day on some dudes. No big deal. Cut them up pretty good. No big deal. <laughs> You and your boy handled free bands, handled free bands off of Matt and Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Got him on three quick ones. No big deal. Yeah, yeah definitely no big deal. A little we, white we man were giving out jump the deals, action. Though. Oh, we we're handling them, <laughs> handling them. But we handed so, out the big deals. <laughs> that's it. That's the truth. So okay, so you're playing all sports. Like, you, are you playing for like school teams and stuff? Yes, yes, all school teams. Um, nice. some local and, okay. um, yeah, yeah, I just, I just that never, you, uh, that you, like you kind of latched onto or that, you know, became like your, cause I'll tell you, like I did, you know, same thing coming up baseball, uh, football, I wrestled. So it was like baseball, football, wrestling, boxing coming up. And then when I got to high school to go to college, I focused more on wrestling Right, but that didn't work okay. out, and I never, went to, <laughs> never went to college. I got expelled from two high schools, babe. College, college wasn't in the picture. And then, uh, God damn. And then uh, he's so, a rebel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a moron, is what it is. And then, uh, but no, but so then, but I concentrated more on wrestling. You know, in high school, that be like. I feel like in high school, when you get to a certain age, if you want to go for a scholarship or something, you do have to kind of focus more on one sport. At least that's how it was when I was in school. And I feel like a lot of kids, that's still the deal. Um, but what was what were you doing? Were you like still doing so, a bunch of sports or did you concentrate more on one? So like my like my my main sport that I was like fixated on was uh, uh, football. Perfect. You know, football. Nice. Football was like um, my my father. Uh, was my first coach uh, when I was in California, so I was oh, raised. Great. I was raised um, in that type of atmosphere, you know. Mm -hmm. um, he kind of like put me in position. He was my, you know, like I said, he was my first coach. Put me in my. Uh, he actually took me out of my first position and put me in my best position that fit me, you know, that he's seen. And what, uh, what, what position was which that? Which was a, a running a running back, you know, and it worked that. out well because I was a big Terrell Davis fan. You know? Oh, loved TD. Yeah. Dude, Bro, I can cut yo. Sleeper, Listen, great running back. Sleeper, great Listen, running back. Man. Yo, beautiful, a beautiful way to maneuver his legs around that field, man. You know what I'm saying? Like a ballerina, man, on grass. Oh, you hear me? Bro. Straight up, man. I'm Good. trying to tell you, man. And um, I was infatuated with him, and I just took off from there, and I was just like, yeah. you know, we used to play blitz a lot. So <laughs> I'm talking about... <laughs> I'm talking about learning how to truck people. Yo. Um, Jerome Yo. Bennis gave me that, you know, uh, quality. <laughs> You know, seriously, man, because I, I was a little bit bigger. And I was shorter, of course, but I'm still short. But, you know, um, you know, all that had helped, you know, my skills, you know, my skill oh, set. Bro. But I, like I said, I just wasn't ever dedicated as I should have been. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Do you look on back? Do you look back on that with a little bit of regret? Knowing, like, um, had you dedicated a little more, maybe you could have Absolutely done not. Or, no. Absolutely not, because um, it's not. it wasn't my department. So, right. um, you know, it's just what uh, I'm a firm believer you know in stuff. that. Um, yeah. It, yeah, you know, and then, and then, and then your past, like, your past. you know how we play basketball? Like, uh, you know, just for recreational purposes. Like, yo, it's just like I still get to do that as a as an adult. You know, we, we when I was staying out in Columbus, Ohio, yo, we used to play on – uh, Columbus, Ohio's practice field, which is all turf, you know what I'm saying? And we used to play backyard football every Sunday, faithfully, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, and I used to, listen, bro, like, it was sweet. And, and the football play, some of the football players used to come out, you know what I'm saying? They used to come out, middle linebackers, maybe a linebacker here and there, some, you know, some people from the community. Yeah, we used to get it in, Matt, you hear me? Get it yeah. in. I'm talking yeah. about sh shaking and baking. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not playing, man. I'm not playing. Dude, I'd be, playing. I mean, I'd be at this age. I'm like, I'm like, 
I would just be so worried about getting injured. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, but you're back. This is back in your younger years, bro. I would, I mean, like, dude, that was, dude, that was the other thing. Like, pick up football, bro. Was that not the best time ever? Yep. Dude, when you and your boys come on out, you know, doing your thing, you had your teams, right? Like, oh, did you have an old head coming up? Um, Like an older well, kid I, in the neighborhood that was your dude? Let me see. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was some, yeah. dude, uh, some dude named Chad. He uh, he yeah. taught me how to play defense on basketball. I'll oh, never forget him. Oh, dude. Yeah, I had yeah, a couple, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a couple. I had a couple. I had, one was this dude named Jack Byers who was like, he was like, dude, bro, if you if you look at like the the nineties, like the late nineties, early two thousands, like coolest kid in school, this guy, this is who you would cast. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, he was right, the right. cool like best athlete. The girls loved him. He was just like <laughs> yo, yo. the coolest guy. So he was like one yo, of my old heads sure coming enough. up. And he's like one of my best friends, his older brother. So he always like was cool with us and like looked out for us. And then like I had another guy, his name was Jay Bisline, who was like a couple of years older than me, that he was like a really good athlete and like always like, you know, he like had my back and stuff when we were when we okay. were doing things. So Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 No, uh, dude, similar situation I had. Yeah. That's you know? something yeah, yeah, important yeah. though. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it know, is, like, it is, it is. Yeah. That's you know, an it, it helps it helps it helps you along the journey. You know, like yeah. I yo, like the dude that I used to look up, like, I really, like, looked up to his ball game. You know, he knew exactly how to handle the ball thoroughly. Um, he was also, like you mentioned, uh, with the guy that influenced you, um, he, you know, he was a handsome uh, individual, um, yeah. had nice hair. This is when, yeah. I'm, I'm, we're talking about, this is when AI had the dreads, I mean, not the dreads, but uh, the braids, the cornrows. Uh, so the cornrows are just all over the place, you know? So, like, he had good hair and all that, you bro, know? Bro, glasses, was smart, you know? He was... Yo, he'd be at the lunch table. All the girls be right there. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You get to sit with him. So you now you're, yeah, you know, you're fitting in. You know, yeah. so they know you as a, oh, that's Chaz Frank. Oh, uh, you, know? you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, cool. By, and like, he was one of, was he one of the older kids too that wasn't a dick to the younger kids? Because that was, dude, that was the worst back in the day. No, the but we had that, one of those, man. But oh, see, bro, we had we a had, million. So I live like, see, like, see, here's the thing. Anytime we ran in or encountered one of those individuals, yo, man, we're like, we live like little rascals back then, man. Yeah, we're attacking yeah. first, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I'm talking about we may still the oh his bite, you know, yeah. if you come at us disrespectful like that, you know, like yeah. seriously. Like, yeah. you know, uh, it's been, it's been, you know, plenty of incidents <laughs> where we had to, you know, uh, conflict warfare. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Upon, you know, the neighborhood bullies, you know, as they, you know, they as were just, they you know, what, four years older than us back in the day. Yeah. You know, the teenagers, you, as we used to call but them. But that's like a big difference. You know what I mean? Like, if you're 12 and they're 16 and they're picking on you, like, they're a fucking loser. Yo, you know? straight losers. Straight losers. Yeah. Straight like, losers. The fuck yo. Home, that's, bro. Especially when you look at it now. Like, yeah. damn. That dude was a complete lame. You ain't, you ain't, no, you had nothing better to do, bro. Like, you're 16. Right. Like, you you know, like, you really well, can pick on some fucking 12 year olds. <laughs> like, you fucking loser. Yeah. Right. So, so, okay. So, you're coming up, like, you're playing sports, you're doing all that stuff, right? And then, uh, you're, you, uh, you're in high school. Uh, what high school did you go to? I went to, what's the heck in high school? No, in Montgomery shit. County. Yeah, yeah. I went Montgomery. to North Penn. Get the fuck out of here. Nah, man. Wow. Yo, awesome! Yeah. How the irony in this? Um, uh, but Legit, dude, yeah. we're yo. That's crazy. That like in California, we were probably like we were less than an hour and a half away from each right. other in California because <laughs> I was in Simi Valley, you were in Rialto, R- R- Rialto, right? Right. And then we're here back sure in enough, PA. In pa- back in PA, we're probably like I lived. In, I grew up in Lansdale, right? Okay. Where, yeah, I grew up in uh, Amber and then Bluebell, bro. Dude. See what I'm saying? Yeah, like we're li- we've literally probably like crossed paths like a thousand times, not even know. Bro, sure enough, bro. I'm I'm, sh- I'm sure That's we had wild. we had we had to, bro. Especially if you went what to North year? Penn, that was our rival. You know what I'm what saying? Year did you graduate Wissahickon? Um, so I didn't graduate from Wissahickon. Uh, I got expelled my <laughs> my graduation year, and I ended up Another, getting transferred. Oh, look at that! Yeah, yeah. Another <laughs> similarity. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> all right. Sure. I got transferred to uh, uh, my my mother transferred me uh, back to the city of Harrisburg, and I graduated uh, in the city school for, well from the city school uh, called John Harris. All right, what year? Uh, two thousand six. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. So then we're de- I mean, I mean, I graduated '03, so I was a little ahead of you, but 
Okay. So then, <laughs> all right. So you're back in Harrisburg, right? You got expelled. Are you cool to say what you got expelled for? Uh, fighting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah literally, yeah. just fighting. So that's all I did. That's, that's why, the thing, look, though. In at Wissahickon, right? Like Wissahickon, there's a bunch of yups there. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. There's some like, like, yo, some motherfucking like, you know, coke loving rich boys that don't know shit, right? That think they're tough. Dude, yum, right? Like, come on, you know the deal. So they talk some dumb shit, get smacked. Like, you know, they can go fuck themselves. You know Bro, yes, saying? yes, yes. Man, the dynamic of, you know, just for, you know, diversity alone was a, a hell of a, a hell of a way to uh, transition. Can I, can know, I ask, to... was there a lot of black people in Wissahickon? I say about, uh, about like 10%, you know? So not, so not a lot. Not a lot. No. You know, yeah. not a lot. So, 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 so like, um, it was just a difference, you know, like it was, just, but it, like, like that experience with growing up with in the suburbs and then going back to the city, you know, um, it's a hell of a, it, it, the energy changes, you know, that fast, yeah. you know, yeah. and like, I, and then I finished my last year back in the city, which was interesting how that worked. Um, but yeah, is, so, is Harrisburg like uh predominantly like African American city or yes, is it yes, like, a, very, is very it really okay. African American. So it's like uh -huh. a it's like a small version of Philadelphia, you know. So would you describe it then like so I've heard this before. Someone told me that if you look at Atlanta, Atlanta's like an island where Atlanta itself is black, but it's surrounded by a sea of white, right? Yeah. Would you say like Harrisburg's similar where it's like a black city Absolutely. surrounded by a sea of white? Okay. Absolutely. Anytime anytime you see a city, it's surrounded by a sea of white. And that's no disrespect to the Caucasian community. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like seriously, like yeah, maybe you're right. Now, it's I mean, all, like it's just all they're not always, but, um, but they're not. It's not always like a, a black city, though. You know what I mean? No, like, no, no. Yeah. Like so, like anytime you see a city, you know, the majority of that 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 city would be, you know, uh, predominantly, you know, um, especially, you know, because it's anytime you see a city, it's always poverty involved. So you're gonna see Hispanics, you're gonna see blacks. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna see people who are in poverty. Period. You know what I'm saying? It's not, I it's see. not a, a color based thing. You're just gonna see people who are in poverty. You know what I'm saying? All so right. moving back into that space of energy, you know, like it, it, it definitely, it changed. I got into, I got into one fight at that high school as well, but I still graduated though. So my mm -hmm. father did, he did, he, he did an okay job, you know, with getting nice. me, you know, through high, uh, my last year of high school. Dude, that's another thing too, where it's like, like people, you know, people don't realize like when you get to that age, there's sometimes like, you know, I don't know for me, like I remember when my sister graduated high school, she's the oldest, my sister, right? That, like, when she graduated, it was, like, the biggest thing. Like, we had a huge right. party, and, like, everyone was all about it, bro. By the time it was me, they were just like, let's just hope this kid makes it. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, right, like right, you know, right. like, I feel exactly. like people kind of, like, take, like, you know, the parents are, they're just too tired, and they're doing their own thing. And, like, you know, I remember my mom, she was trying to find a new husband, and, like, my dad had left and gotten remarried. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, right. You know, like they're they're doing their own thing where it's like you kind of have to look out for yourself. So did absolutely, because you like, you're learning. You're learning. Did you have you're Did you have a that, come to Jesus meeting where it's like, look, if I'm gonna graduate high school, I'm gonna have to bar up and do this shit myself. Yeah, you damn right. You damn right. Um, I think it was one of my two of my teachers that actually uh stopped me from um you know dropping out because uh, I was um. You know, I had that on my mind. I was just, I was in the streets sure. my twelfth grade year. You know, like yeah. well, I moved back. I moved back to the city, so I was surrounded by. Yeah. I grew up in uh, my family's from Harrisburg. You know, all of my family, literally, my bloodline is in Harrisburg. Um, yeah. and so I was surrounded by my family. I was surrounded by family members. As far as like my cousins, I was I, I graduated yeah. with my cousins. You know, yeah. I was in school. <laughs> you know, I'm in school with you know long lost cousins. You know, yeah. and so you know the energy switches immediately. You know, and you start to follow what they're doing. You know, you get to learn what they're doing, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And, you know, you take upon their trades, you know, and the city and it's and the city trades are a big difference than the uh, suburban trades, you know? And uh, when it comes to as far as like uh, learning how to survive on your own as a teenager, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And um, that was that was the most interesting part about, uh, you know, being in um, the city of Harrisburg at, at the age, well, at the age of 17, transitioning into uh, 18. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, because that's what that's what I'm, I'm that's where it took off. I'm trying to tell well, you, that's it's scary too. Because then, like, like I remember being 17 and literally being like, "Who gives a shit?" Like, just doing whatever. Because you know, unless you're like gonna murder someone, they're not gonna try you as an adult. You know what right, I mean? Like, right. unless you're doing like strong arm robbery, 
they're going to be like, all right, this misdemeanor, you're underage, whatever. Right. But then as soon right. as you turn 18, I distinctly remember, like, my brother being like, listen, dude, like, just to let you know, like, you can be tried as an adult now. So, like, you need fucking, if you can do something, be smart about it because they're going to fucking hamstring you. You know, right? Is that is that exactly exactly? And so I remember, okay. I remember my, I can recall my father telling me, you know, similar words to that, you know, to what you just conveyed, you know, um, just didn't listen, you know, because you're so you're young, you're young. My mother, you know, yeah. when you're raised by when you're raised by your mother, the majority of your life, you're, and she, you know, she can't really discipline you as well as a father can, yeah. man. Yeah. And you move back to a city, yeah. Come yeah. on, man. You know what I'm saying? You get, oh man, you get to it's a certain to age where mom can't discipline you no more. You know, like that's what it was for me. I was like, mom, I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I want, and you get exactly, to pay for it. <laughs> exactly. And I, yeah. I remember, I can remember telling my mom that, yo, I'm eight, I'm, 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 I'm 18. Well, I'm about to be 18. You, you will never, you'll never get to tell me what to do again. You know, just uh, saying it so proudly, just yeah. saying it so proudly, but so ignorant, yo. You know, so ignorant, man. You that's know? yo. That's when everyone around you that heard that just goes, you know, what I mean, like, yeah, this you dude damn don't right, know. man. I don't yeah, know how many man. moments I had like that. That's for sure. But it, it, okay, it's horrible. So you you barred up. You got you graduated high school. You did it on you did it on your own. Pulled up by pulled yourself up by your bootstraps. Got that done. Right. And then where were you after high school? Where'd you go? Uh, so. Uh, so I moved to the east side of Baltimore. Okay. Prop yeah, Joe's yeah. territory. Got it. Yep, 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 yep. And I stayed out there for about six months uh with my uncle. And uh he couldn't he couldn't <laughs> he couldn't tolerate me no when, longer. When you're because... saying like you're living with aunts and uncles, right? Or is this like your mom being like, I can't control this boy. You got to, you got to live. You got to so please watch now, him kind so of thing. Now or... that I had graduated, I was staying with, all right. So I was under my father's uh domain, you know? Okay. And um, so. Did he, had he moved back to PA or? No. Yeah. Yeah. He had moved back to PA for roughly a few years due to um my grandmother's um MS conditions. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. So. uh, Were you close with yeah, your grandma? I'm, absolutely. Absolutely. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so that was pretty tough on everybody then, the MS. That was that was real tough on them, more so yeah. me, you know. Uh, um, tough seeing because that because they too. they grew up with it, you know, they grew up yeah. watching, you know, her deteriorate. You know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. I just got to see the last of the results of yeah. the deterioration and what, and what you know the actual disease can do, you know, what I'm saying fully. Yeah, you didn't, you, know? you didn't know any different, yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, ultimately, you know, um, it was like my father, my father, he. He suggested that I move to Baltimore with my uncle because I was so I was so heavy in the streets. I was getting in trouble. I was getting locked up. Uh like not no like bad. I was just like selling weed, you know, getting locked up for it. And, you know, so I was just like ma- not making a, g- a great name for myself. You know? Mm. So uh rob uh the the you know, the rob yeah, the robbery the robbery started around then. You know, so my dad, like, oh shit, hell nah. Y'all getting shot at. You feel y'all got people coming to the crib shooting up the you know what I'm saying? Like, so go with your uncle. Go with your uncle. You need to go to Baltimore, <laughs> you need to move, you know? Uh yeah. so I decided to go ahead and move. And um, you know, I but started you're, to, well, you're, how old were you when you moved to Baltimore? Um, I was just turning eighteen. Okay, so this was like oh six, oh seven, that yeah, yeah. time period. Uh two thousand six, yep. So the wire was in like, this was the height of the wire then. Right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like, we about, yeah, yeah, we about yeah. to be season four of The Wire right now. And you about to get that real life, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you, you about to be like, hey, I'm, uh, I'm not gay, but I'm Omar. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, right, all right, right. Then. So, okay, so you go to East Baltimore, right? Right. What What was life like down there? Uh, um, It was very secluded. Uh, all I did was, um, my uncle, when I first uh, arrived, my uncle, he got me, um, <clears throat> he introduced me to Ruby Tuesdays and got me a job there. Okay. So, um, doing, doing what? Doing, uh, working the salad bar and, uh, okay. pre- um, prepping, you know, like I would yeah, prep up yeah. the food for, you know, like, um, a night, a nightly yeah. meal or ev- yeah, uh, yeah, a evening cook. meal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or evening meals. So yeah. it went well to a degree, but, uh, my uncle and I, uh, didn't see eye to eye. He was, a uh, He's a minister, still is to this day. Oh um, boy! I was so smoking he was too much weed. That, yeah, for, uh, <laughs> he, he called, was hitting he you with me. that Jesus, and you were like, "Jesus, please come on." No, I don't want. Listen, I you love the you Lord, know. but 
you know. Like, yeah, exactly. Don't don't smother yeah. me with it, you yeah. know. <laughs> but um, no, you know, you were we're young, you know. So yeah. um, and thought, and you thought, and you were at the I know everything phase. You it, know? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, we're so ignorant. So we're dumb. So ignorant. So fucking dumb. Do you know how many times Yo, like I wish I could have gone back in was, time. Was, and just like <laughs> smacked my whatever younger self, bro. Oh, right. dude, dude. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Wake the fuck up, bro. Jesus. <laughs> Word, but um, yeah. So uh, at, yo, staying out there ultimately was like a no go. You know. Yeah. Yeah, it was a no go. So I decided <laughs> after that, um, I, I decided to um stay. I ended up meeting up with a friend out there, okay. uh, one of the homies. He ended yeah. up going to uh, Morgan State University, and he okay. stayed right down the street from where my uncle was at. So I decided to move into the dorm room with him. <laughs> oh, how that? Go? Yeah, that was that was that was dope. I did that for like a whole month. Oh, it was rough. It was rough though because I had quit my job. I quit my job. I thought I just knew what I was doing, man. Yeah. So I quit my job and everything, man. Trying to and you didn't realize like you're real like you're think and you're and you're thinking too like oh this dude's got my back. This dude who's like just like an associate, really, right? Like. Nothing, yo, not not like a facts. like a ride or die. So you're like, yo, this is my dude now. I can live here and not we, realizing like just, how much you're inconveniencing him. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, it just got real. It just got real uh, irresponsible when I decided to go ahead and make that decision to 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 move out on my own in Baltimore. No siblings, no family at all there. Oof. Besides him, you know what I'm and saying. A whole lot of pride on the line too, because you're stupid and eight. Come on, this is this shit was crazy, man. But yeah, that that's it started taking off from there, man. Damn. Okay. So then, what kind of stuff are you getting into? So, so my aunt and them they try to uh, put me up in the uh, an art institute. I denied that opportunity while I was out there still staying with my friend because I was still in contact with him. Um, and uh, I ended up getting my job back at Ruby Tuesdays. And here's the funny part. Here's the kicker. I ended up getting my friend a job too. He quits. And then he's like, yo, I'm moving back to Philly, man. I'm, I'm dropping out of school. What you going to do? Morgan State, buddy. You're Morgan State, yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So he's like, what you going to do? I'm like, fuck it, man. I'm going I'm back to Philly too. You. <laughs> yeah, man. We just took off from there, and then from there, uh, I stayed with him for about, like, two months at his mom's house. Oh, it was rough. Okay, so you went with your buddy from Morgan State. He moved back to Philly. You moved back to Philly with him. You're living with your boy from Morgan State and his mom in, for a month, <laughs> right? Like, you basically, you just crashing, right? Like, literally just, like, living the, like, the clothes off your back. You're just crashing, doing whatever, right? You you pulling any chicks at this time or what? Yeah, absolutely, I had a girlfriend and everything. Um, oh shit! Yeah, yo, she bro. she must have loved you because of the struggle. She was Listen, more in love bro. with the struggle than she was in love with you. That's the truth. <laughs> I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth, though, right? She loved that my boyfriend. He's so raw right now. He's living in the streets. He's living at this dude. Blah blah blah. Right? Like she loved your tragedy, bro. She loved it. She was harping to her girl, like, "I love this dude. He's such a fighter. Oh my god, he done yeah. all this and he don't do that no more." And blah blah. Yo, man, Listen, bro, bro, let me tell you, man, bro, um, bro. Is, he... is that is that not one hundred percent correct though? Bro, that's that's like so like thorough, like that's so accurate, bro. <laughs> you feel me? Like it's like thoroughly accurate, bro. I'm not yeah. even gonna lie. But um, she she definitely played her position very well. She actually was a uh, a big part of my growth uh, period. Uh, she actually helped me become a start becoming a man. Uh, along she wanted with, to save you, know, you, right? Yeah, she she be she became one of those uh women who actually started implementing characteristics in you know, her, her man, you know, saying unintentionally, but with all, right. you know, great intentions to, you know, right. to do so, you know, yeah, straight up. She was a real strong, like real strong influence. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. You uh, still close with her? Or? Absolutely. Just got off the phone with her a week and a half ago, man. And the conversation right. lasted. We haven't spoke. We haven't spoke with each other since I've been home. Uh, yeah. And that, con that conversation lasted three hours, three hours and 26 minutes. Only oh, reason why I, I I I literally only reason why I remember it because I kept on mentioning it to her because that's how close and you know that's how close her and I really were as a couple you know yeah. what I'm saying like seriously man this this yeah. this woman was amazing man and uh, she still is you know you seem so, like one of those two like like one of those guys where it's like 
when you have a girl that you can trust, like you will be open and honest with them and, 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 and expect that in return. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, you know, that's right. That's right on the spot. You know what I'm saying? Straight yeah. up. Hey, Whatever. man, that's the way it should that's the way it should be. So absolutely. You know, if it's not reciprocated that way, then you know it's not healthy for you. No. You know? No, absolutely not. So okay. So you're doing your thing, right? Like uh you're 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 just trying to survive at this point, right? You're probably what, like 18, 19 years old? Still eighteen, still eighteen, okay. about to be nineteen. Where do we go from here? So uh, this is where, um, I, I, uh, I must admit, this is where, uh, spirituality came into play. Um, so I'm, I'm wandering around with my life, um, and I'm crashing out pretty much. Cause that's what it's looking like. Um, you know, just talking about it even now, but so I'm crashing out you know, as a young Can man. Can I ask, not... so like, are you like, are you smoking weed or are you popping pills? Like, what are you doing? No. So I never done, I never done any other substances outside of marijuana. Okay. Um, never been a fan of drugs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just been a fan of weed yeah. because weed was, a uh, weed, weed came in, uh, my life. This is why such, I'm so infatuated with marijuana because it came in my life when I was at a point of where, uh, and I was in my preteens, um, where I was still learning about me as far as the young man trying to figure out what type of lane do I fit in? You know what I'm saying? Okay. And when marijuana came into play, it actually helped balance me out, uh, you know, with my, you know, with my mental behavior, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, yeah. I noticed that, you know, so, yeah, but, um, you know, segueing back to, you know, um, what we were talking about, uh, it's, it's to me, like for my, all right. So this is, like I said, this is where things started becoming real. Okay. When God decided to interfere or the creator, whatever this entity is, um, decided to interfere. And all of a sudden, uh, I'm sleep, uh, my, my friend that I'm staying with, uh, which is the one that was from Morgan view. Um, he, uh, his mother, she was an alcoholic. So, uh, while I was staying, uh, under that roof with him, he would leave and just leave me there. And, um, Sometimes my girlfriend couldn't come over there and hang out with me. So I would be there alone, you know, and, um, you know, just left with, you know, just left with me and hearing her, um, you know, this drunk woman upstairs just, you know, yapping on. So it was just like, which is weird. I didn't know, you know, like I said, I had no sense of direction of where I was going. So I guess, you know, uh, one of these nights, um, she was just angry in her drunk, in her drunken moment or her drunker moment. And, um, she, uh, decided to go ahead and kick everybody out the house. So I got kicked out yeah. with my suitcase and, uh, it was cold as shit, Matt. I'll yeah. never forget this. Cause this is when things really took off in my life. Uh, as far as like me becoming a man, um, I, I got, I got my suitcase, big ass suitcase, got my clothes and put it on the front porch and, um, once she closed that door behind me, I was like, damn, where the fuck am I going to go? Mind you, where we were staying at is in Philly, but it was in it's, it's, it was back in the suburban area, which is in Ambler, Ambler, okay. Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah, so we're okay. staying back, you know, where I grew up at, uh, where Wissahickon is, you know, that's because that's where, uh, excuse me, that's where Wissahickon is. And uh, so um, I had a friend around there, but um, they weren't home that night, unfortunately. And so I ended up uh, staying in his, uh, his mother's car in the back seat because I remember the truck used to always be open. They used to always leave the back doors open. <laughs> so I slept in the car that night and um and I, I must admit and I don't really share this with a lot of people unless they unless they do ask or unless they really want to know. Like, you know, like you're um, you know, as far as like, you know, the intel I'm providing, you know, with you being inquisitive about this. Um I I, I literally got in that back seat with a towel, with one of my towels that I had on my back my uh, my suitcase and I covered myself up to a point where of course it didn't work but I I got some sleep but I was awakened in the middle of the night well excuse me in in like mid morning probably like 5 a.m. and um I awakened and I just you know I hear this just echo on my mind you know how your intuition is it's like go to Tim's house Tim was my uh he's my white boyfriend <laughs> and uh he was cool as hell it was my next door neighbor um uh, well, as far as like, you know, when I did grow up in that neighborhood, that was my next door neighbor at the time. So anyway, um, I went over to his house and uh, I knocked because I know his mom real well. And sure enough, she answered the door. <laughs> she answered the door. She said, Josh, what's going on? I said, yo, Miss Lonnie, I'm cold. I, I said, yo, can I yo, I slept in my, I slept in, uh, she knew who, you know, the person was. I said, I slept in so-and-so's car. Uh, and, you know, his mother kicked me out last night. I got no place to go. I got no place to stay. She's like, yo, jo Josh, get your so behind in here right now, man. Yeah. Get, Tim, Tim, wake up. Josh is here. 
Give him some clothes. Get, get him a towel or wash rag and some soap. Uh, get him in the shower. Josh, the shower's upstairs. Get yourself yeah. together. Uh, and then when I got, I finally, man, I cried in that shower, man. You no, me? I, I was so scared, bro. I was so scared, dog. Bro, bro when bro, you're bro, like, like when, when you're when you're at like bottom like that, and you get a, an act of kindness, kind of seemingly out of nowhere, dude. That is like that's something that'll like rock you to your core. You know what I'm yo, saying? Facts, like there's bro, like, there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing. Bro, it was like no, it was anyone like, would have done that. Yo, facts, bro. Like, and it was because it was like that response right there was like, holy shit, like, damn, yo, like, because I was out there alone, bro, like, I literally yeah. alone, bro, like, no she one. She could have turned you no away. One. She could have said, hey, man, sorry, no room at the end, you know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to tell you, she, bro. And she's within her rights to do so, but how many times, can I ask this, how many times since that moment has, like, you, have you had a situation where, like, you know, it, it came to your mind, like, you know, what a good, like, uh, like, a, like a crossroad, where good person, bad person, and like that thought came into your mind of like, hey, this is how like a good person is supposed to behave. Like thinking, like you know what I mean. Like, have you ever had like an opportunity similar to that or something like that down the road where you could have gone the wrong, you know, the wrong way or the right way, and that thought played in your mind of like, no, this is this is the type of person I want to emulate, not another type. You know, believe it, believe it or not, you know, like that's um these people um kind of like added on to me, you know what I'm saying? So it's like um being amongst those type of you know um characteristics you know and you know and and people you know um it just glue it, it it attached itself to me if you understand what i'm saying like so yeah. it kind of like i just automatically took that upon you know took that on and just ran with it or that type of behavior you know what i'm saying because that's all it that's all it was and that the act of behavior you know mm -hmm. saying taught me you know in a long in a long haul like how to you know um uh, you know how to be how to be how to be yeah. responsible as a, as an yeah. adult you know what I'm saying? But also not only that, but, you know, learning, you know, uh, you know, the real principles of, you know, the ethical codes, you know, out here, you know what I'm saying? As, as an adult, you know what I'm saying? As a human, you know what I'm saying? And being amongst other humans, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so it was raw, but I, I wanted to, I wanted to share that, you know, that same day, my aunt, uh, called me, not my aunt that I stayed with when I first got back from California, but it was a different auntie. She stayed out in Fort, Fort Washington, Maryland. Um, and she's like, She's a lot of you not. She called me that morning. Matter of fact, I called her because I told her about my situation. And she said, she said, nephew, get on the train and come out here right now. Stay with me. I, I, boy, after that, quick, it was life changing. On. We are coming towards the top of time. Uh, before we get out of here, I just want to talk about this. So, like I said, in the link of the, this, this description of this episode, I'll have a link to hybrid homes underscore eight eight uh on instagram this is where you can find josh's art you can get some videos uh with him and talking about his story and his journey and you can contact him if you're interested in seeing some of his art possibly purchasing some of his art honestly it's beautiful beautiful stuff i really really like what he's got going on here uh so anyone interested in just checking out some really good art and and getting to see more of josh's story i have a link in the description of this episode hybrid homes underscore eight eight Make sure you check it out, Josh. So, dude, I can't I appreciate thank you, you enough. Man. Thank you for dude. that, man. I, I really hey. do. Man. Thank you for even you know applying such activity out here to even you know uh, provide such resources or even you know uh, opportunities to allow people to you know share you know their testimonies or whatever it may be you know that they would like to offer the world you know to be uh, or to have uh, such an influence on. You know what I'm saying? Of course, man. I'm happy to do it. Dude, I'll tell you, uh, if my dream with this show is to be able to build an ecosystem where people can come on here and promote their stuff and talk about their stuff and we can help grow each other. And, you know, I could just be a big part of a big ecosystem, kind of like, you know, if you were to look at like a Rogan, look at the things that have branched off from Rogan, like Segura and Burke Kreischer and Theo Vaughn and, you know, all these guys that and shot and like Fire and the Kid and all these things that they flourish because Rogan flourish. I would like to be that for a ton of, for a bunch of people. So happy to have you on, man. I'm very, very happy and honored to be able to promote, promote you and, and hybrid homes underscore eight, eight on Instagram, what you have going on with your artwork. Cause I think it's great stuff, man. I wouldn't have Thank you on you here it. otherwise. Of course. Man. You. So we are coming towards the type of time, Josh. So is there anything you would like to say to your family and friends before we get out of here? Um, only thing I would like to say, cause I don't, you know, want to come across cliche, but um, you know, 
of course, I'm definitely dedicated and honorably, you know, um, and ultimately, you know, just here um, on the account of taking care of one assignment, which is to take care of my family and to take care of myself along with, you know, the community of others um, in this in this planet that we're in uh, while here on this journey, you know what I'm saying? So to be a part of such a big community here in this planet, you know what I'm saying, uh, I would consider everyone family then. And, you know, to have everyone being considered, you know, a member of this family, of this planet, then therefore um, I would expect, you know, the ultimate goal would be not even only, not even only for you, but for every, every last one of us who would like to indulge in such a beautiful atmosphere in this planet as a family, you know, would to consider the fact of remaining it to be a beautiful planet with beautiful people in it that will continue to allow it to reside in a place that it is in, you know, which it needs to be in, I should say, which is a peaceful atmosphere, you know what I'm saying? And that may come across cliche, but it can be peaceful and it shall be peaceful. And if, you know, you have others like yourself out here setting trends, including me, uh, we'll continue to make it peaceful, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know, one step at a time as we gradually get closer to that ultimate goal, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely, man. People helping people, living in a world of harmony. Could not agree more, man. That's what we want. So, dude, Josh, thank you so much for being on the show. Super excited to have you back on. We'll have you back on the show in a month or so. Uh, really looking forward to that. But this has been another episode of The Working Perspectives Podcast. I'm Matt Lavelle. He's Joshua Holmes. In case you're wondering, you can find all our stuff and all our content and all podcast platforms and YouTube at Work and Perspectives Podcast. You can us on Instagram at Work and Perspectives Podcast. And you can join us on Twitter and TikTok at Working P Pod. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, please email us at workperspectives at gmail.com. And please like and subscribe so we keep bringing you this sweet, sweet content. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. See ya. Rocky Look, Emily. Rocky Look, <laughs> <Rocky Luck, laughs> Emily. <laughs> All right. No, I know, Thanks. Cole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my man. All right. Thanks. See you.